What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul, also known as the Northman. And if you are new here, I make guides, tips, experiments on football managers as well as streaming on Twitch. Link is in the description. This background will disappear with the magic of a green screen if you head over there. In today's video though, I'm doing a little hints and tips on the new squad planner in Football Manager 2023. Now, the smallest things within this squad planner can be very helpful when you are building for the season ahead or the next season or the season after that. Now, these are just small basic hints and tips, but very useful things to make sure that this squad planner is not too overwhelming for you when you first turn on FM23. So when you go into the squad planner down on the side here, you are greeted with this screen where you have your current season, next season, season after, as well as the current formation you have selected. Now you do have a drop down option here to go over to the other couple of tactics you might have created for the squad you are playing as. So I have three tactics, a 4-5-1, 4-5-1 defensive and a 5-2-3 with wing backs um, just to mix things up, you know, just to see what we can do and um, you do also have a little magic button here show all positions and if you do tick that button it will take you onto this where you can check out positions that maybe you're not using at the minute in your squad but maybe you just want to check okay do i have a lot of players who can play in this position and if you do maybe it's a tactic you can look at using to bring in them players in the long run but going on to what I find the squad plan very useful for is the next season option. So I am coming to the end of season one with Espiog. And if we click on the next season button, straight away you see a change on this first option, the goalkeeper. So if we go back current season, I have two. I have my goalkeeper and my backup goalkeeper in the first team. We do obviously have youngsters if we're going to add from the B team, goalkeeper wise, I do have a couple of young subs. None of them have the ability to be in the first team, so I don't add them into my squad planner. But if we go next season, we are actually down to only one player because my backup goalkeeper is due to leave us. Now, this is where it becomes useful. So I've been looking around, checking out a few people. If we go to add and we go to shortlist, goalkeepers, then you can see here I have a goalkeeper who I've added in my squad called William Licke. So if we click on William Lickgate, he will go in to the squad planner ready for next season. So straight away, if we do manage to bring him in, I can see I now have two people. And you can adjust where you feel like they will be. So I can actually move him up and say next season he will probably be our number one goalkeeper. Now what I can do if I want to just double check against some people I've already got. I can for example bring in this uh, Malthe Hansen. And you can see he's only a two-star grayed out player at the minute. So he would be our third choice goalkeeper. But it does give you the ability to put some of your reserve players in. So you can see, okay, would he maybe be good enough to come in next season? We can straight away see Hansen would not be. But we've we've added him in just to check. And if anything, gives us a bit of peace of mind. Okay, we do have him in a super, super emergency. So if we do sign William Licke, we would be pretty much sorted in that position. We have three goalkeepers, maybe a third who's a better quality, but we can work on that. But it's a nice way to do where you can add people from the shortlist. And if we go into central defence, for example, these are the defenders we have going into next season. But I would say the top two here are not defenders for starters. The um, centre-backs. Uh, Corrick is a right-back. So we can straight away, we can move him all the way to the bottom. And Lawson is also a, um, a left-back. So I'll tell you what we can do. Down the right-hand side here, you do have the option to remove them. So let's remove them two out. That drops us to only three central defenders going into next season. One of them... Malthe Christensen is not actually in our first team this season. He's only a two-star current, and I don't rate him as someone with much potential. So that puts us down to three defenders going in next season. So straight away, under my shortlist, defenders, I am planning on bringing in Villad Nielsen. Um, he is currently in Norseland, and we're looking to bring him in on loan next season. Um, so that would take us up to four very good quality central defenders, and straight away, my planning is starting to build and I'm starting to create a shape from what I'm envisioning for next season. So that's the first hint 
tip I would give you is to make sure you are adding people in from your shortlist who you have a solid focus, a solid plan to bring in. Don't just add everybody who you scouting everybody you check now on your shortlist but these players i've added the ones who i really have a keen eye on and who i believe we can bring in for season two so the next tip i want to show you is it's involving this show all position so if we click on that first you can see here it fills out every position then we go to this show full squad view so if we click on that it brings us onto this screen here and i like this screen because straight away I can look and plan if we should maybe look at a tactical change for next season. Now at the minute we're playing a 4-5-1. Now we do have the ability to play wing back tactics. We do have the ability to play an attack and midfielder tactic. Now with that fourth central defender coming in of good quality. We would have the option to play three centre backs as well. We can see looking at this screen. We have no natural midfield on the left and midfield on the right. So straight away I would be ruling that out for the season coming up. Because it would involve too many transfers coming in to change to a tactic which use them positions. Now I do use them positions when we are defending. But that's more final five, final ten minutes of a game. I drop my wingers back. So I don't feel like we should be looking at that kind of a tactic for our starting tactic. Because we're already missing too many players in them positions. But you do get little hints and tips. Like we could play three up top looking at our attackers there. We could look at playing a narrow tactic due to the fact that we've got a few good quality attacking midfielders. We could play three at the back. We could play a couple of defensive midfielders. Having this screen active does give you the ability to look and see at the possibility of changing your tactic going into the upcoming season. Especially when you can go through it like this and see what positions you are having a large amount of quality in and who have really good role ability and potential. But... That is two really good hints and tips to make the squad planner easier for you to get into, easier for you to learn and understand. Then hopefully you can dive deeper into it and become a bit more of an experienced player with the squad planner as FM23 continues. I've been Paul Austin on Northman. If these tips did help you, make sure you do subscribe and I will see you next time.